مرحبا I'm sure that all of you have heard about this saying Before you take care of other you must take care of yourself So after coming to the Netherlands as a refugee and after losing family friends in my homeland Syria I finally lost the trust in myself and even in my own philosophy So I adopt the philosophy of others Focus in yourself first I was so far away from everything I have learned in my old life I was literally following the community in the doctor focus in yourself After a while of living in this way it became so clear to me that there is a big emptiness in my heart it makes everything dark everything black and after one and a half year of living this way i tried to kill myself but thanks god i didn't succeed it's hard to be succeed actually in life i know it looks like a depression story but it's not i am here to tell you a little story about hope and giving in the butterfly effect from a young age i have always believed in the butterfly effect that small things can lead can lead to a great change but the problem is that i was disconnected from myself at that time i made my decision i went to my doctor and says i believe in this crisis in with what's going on now in greece that i can do something but he wasn't supportive he said no hang on ala you have to take care of yourself first you know and i didn't listen as always i bought my ticket and went to greece i spent the first four months volunteering with two different organization and i saw the lack of education for those children they wake up and they have nothing new to learn or to discover they are just waiting and waiting and waiting and for sure blaming and so and at the same time i realized how much doing that work it helped me it helped me so much better than than my medicine it's given me a new purpose in life a real purpose in life bigger than being happy or sad a purpose who make all my issues it just a thing but not everything it was so clear for me it's good for me it's good for the other it's a clear I tried to push some routine in some structure some education for those children but the problem is if you are a refugee it's hard to be heard if you say 1 plus 1 is 2 you still must pro prove it so I went back to the Netherlands where I worked hard for 3 months I earned some money and then returned to to Greece to a camp called Skaramangas just with a bag bag some paper whiteboard in a tent plastic tent in really in a fire in my stomach so i i arrived i built my tent slept next day into the camp i said hello guys if you want uh, there is a school outside it's a street school you know just six blanket and so and if you join the class we can also watch uh, cinema after yeah so that is the class it was literally in the street and this is the cinema i mean it just in old tv the surprise is after a week i had something like 100 children in this school it was really a big surprise for me before the revolution in syria in my normal life i didn't want to go to school or college i just i would wake up and tell my mother i have a headache i have pain in my stomach 
But those children, they were so eager to learn. I stayed in that plastic tent close to the camp, something like one month, until one of the family came to me and says, Hey, Allah, we have an empty place for, for you in our caravan. If you want, you are welcome to move in. I said, oh, no, 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 I'm okay, everything is okay. But actually, I need it so bad. But it's culture. You have to say no also if you are in need. Yeah, after a week, I said, you know what? I would love to move. So I went there. Yes, it was a small caravan, container, and there were six people there, but it was so much better than my plastic tent. At least we had our toilet. There, I didn't have my own toilet in the plastic tent. We had shower, and it was more quiet and safe. Slowly, slowly, that caravan became kind of a checkpoint for the children. If they wanted something, they would shout, Amu ala, Amu ala. It means uncle in Arabic. One day I wake up, I went just outside of the caravan, and I saw some, someone had written, Happy caravan, with one P, not two. <laughs> and it was so meaningful for me. I, I, I just love it. I ask all of them, guys, who does this? Please tell me. No one says. They were afraid. They thought that I will punish them or I will be angry of them or so. And until now, I do not know who does this. But it has written in my heart. Yeah. <laughs> so, I stayed there in total four months until the administration came to me and says, Hey Allah, you are not allowed for you to stay in this camp. We have a new rules now. If you are not an organization, and if you are not working under an um, umbrella of organization, you can't stay here. It was so sad moment for me, especially after building this relationship with those children, especially after knowing their need. But at the same time, they have a right. They have to protect those children. So I left and went back to the Netherlands. The first small things I did was asking Mr. Google how to start a non-profit organization. <laughs> the answer came. <laughs> After three months of studying the system, speaking with friends and family, collecting some money, we have registered Happy Caravan as a non-profit organization. And I asked all my friends if they knew a camp where is really a lack of education or, or they need help. And one of my beautiful Greek friends, she told me about Thermopolis. It's in Greece. So we, we contact them, we, we send some email, etc., and we set a date for starting work. And that day came so fast before the donation came. So I went there again. Bag, bag, you know the rest, but this time there was technology in charge. I bought a projector, so now not a TV, you know, it's a projector. So I went there to the administration. I said, hoi hoi, I'm Allah from Happy Caravan. Say, hello Allah, where is the team? I said, one month, inshallah, they will come. And then they say, where is the resources? I said, you know what, one or two months, inshallah, they will come. But to be honest, guys, inshallah, we use it in the Middle East for something it will never happen. But we wish it will happen. <laughs> Wallah. Yeah. And then the big surprise came when I asked them, is it okay for you if I sleep in the camp or in the storage? You really should see their faces at that time when I asked them that. Well, like, Which kind of organization is that? I said, guys, I know it's not professional. I know it's weird. But please give me just one month to try, in, or two months. And if you don't like my work, you can just kick me out. They say, OK, but we take you to your hotel. It's OK if you don't have a car. I say, no, no, no. We don't have a hotel. We don't have anything. And we still don't have money. And thanks God, they were so open-hearted. They gave me a room number, number 111 in the camp. 
So again, in a one room with six, seven people. But this time, I wasn't alone. I was with three of my best friends. I entered with my depression, with my PTSD, and with my panic attack, because they are always there, always in all the journey. So it was a bit small area for all of this group to be in one place. Yeah. I woke up the next day and went outside the camp and says, guys, I am here to build a school. Who can help me? I am alone. And then they say, so many children there is, and uh, me, 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 me. And then we start. In two days, we change the, the storage from old, dirty storage into a such beautiful, kind of, in my eyes, beautiful area full of color, love and respect but we still have nothing. So, I start teaching those children daily really basic English and basic math. And we had each day cinema. After one and a half month of that work, and after sharing that daily, daily in Facebook, what I'm doing with, you know, I had a message from a volunteer from Texas. She said that she wants to come and volunteer. I was like, oh no, that will not happen. I mean, just look at the map. Greece, Texas, and we don't know each other. <laughs> One week later, she arrived. The next volunteer, Audrey Benjamin, from Pennsylvania. When she arrived, it was for me like, oh my God, the butterfly effect, it works, Allah. It's really working. You are not alone anymore. Look. Yeah. And we start teaching the same things and sharing all that daily, daily, daily. So after teaching all this period with no resources, no chair, no table, no real school, now we have such a beautiful big team in a nice school full of material. We have an AC, can you imagine, in the corner? <laughs> I, you know? I, I, yeah, sure you know. So, yeah, it's, it's really amazing. And we give popcorn daily, apple banana, and, and all those things. And also, we have created a partnership with a school called International School of Prague, which is they create for us a curriculum, a real curriculum, it fit to our need. Yeah, I was so proud in that, you know? <laughs> so, the nice news is that Happy Caravan, it gets a bit bigger and extended. So nine months ago, we have opened our second school in Malakasa, where we serve around 100 children, Afghani children, daily. Unbelievable how it grows and grows and grows. And the other nice news is that Three months ago, we have opened our third school together with our partner, Happy, Happy Academy, which is they really help us to do all of this. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. And we have also inspired 320 volunteers around the world from 40 different nationalities. Yeah. Happy Caravan showed me the butterfly effect. And it showed me also that helping yourself before others, it doesn't work. My experience in this life, in my philosophy in this life, showed me that helping others is the key to help yourself. Because we are one. Believe me, I know it's, it sounds like weird, but we are one. It is a circle. Separating yourself from the other because of your own issues, suffering, pain, it's not a good solution. Look around you, there is a million of million of people suffering around the world. You are not alone in your pain. The feeling that you get while you are active, it helps help you. 
Ja, nicht mehr schön. Ja. Please do not be afraid of falling down. Falling down can be really welcome, as same as your pain. The only way that we can say that we have lived our life is by sharing, but not just by sharing happiness and fun, also by sharing sadness in being ourselves. Yeah, I hope by sharing my little story with you that I touch a little bit of your heart to make you dare to do something. It's within our power. It's really within our power. We are the solution, and we are the butterfly effect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.